Hi, welcome to another video. So, DeepSeek has launched their OCR model, and this is a pretty different model to the general vision language, or even OCR models. This is a super small model. It's just 3 billion parameters, and can run even on 8 gigs of memory, which is pretty great, as you can basically plug it into your enterprise or personal systems pretty easily without using APIs and stuff. Now, the core idea is they use vision as a compression medium for text. Basically, what it does is take a page image, turn it into a small set of vision tokens, and then a decoder reconstructs the text. It's end-to-end. -end. A custom vision encoder called Deep Encoder, plus a 3B mixture of experts decoder, DeepSeek 3B MOE, but only a subset of experts are active per request, so runtime is closer to approximately 500 megabyte model, which is kind of cool. The interesting part is the encoder architecture. They chain a local window attention stage based on SAM base to a global attention stage based on SAM base on clip large and stick a 16 by convolutional compressor in the middle. In simple terms, the first stage looks at patches then the compressor slashes the token count. Then the global stage sees the whole page, but with far fewer tokens. If you feed a 1024 by 1024 doc, you start with 4096 patch tokens. The compressor reduces that to 256 before global attention, which is quite awesome because attention cost blows up with token count. So, Let's move from the idea to how you'd actually use it. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. All in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. You'll choose a resolution mode that controls how many vision tokens you spend. Tiny is 512 by 512 for 64 tokens. Small is 640 by 640 for 100 tokens. Base is 1024 by 1024 for 256 tokens. Large is 1280 by 1280 for 400 tokens. Tiny slash small, just resize. Base slash large preserve aspect ratio by padding. So some tokens are invalid padding, and they compute a valid token count based on the original width slash height. There's also a dynamic Gundam mode for dense pages. Combine n local tiles, typically two to nine tiles of 640 by 640, plus a global 1024 by 1024 view. Total tokens are n times 100 plus 256. There's a heavier Gundam Master variant. 1024 by 1024, local plus 1280 by 1280 global. Trained later for load balancing. The benefit here is, you can spend tokens where they matter keep a global read of the page while adding tiles to capture small fonts and tight tables without blowing up memory. On the compression side, they tested on the Fox Benchmarks English pages with 600 to 1,300 text tokens and used only 64 or 100 vision tokens. Near 9 to 10 times compression, they report around 96 to 97% decoding precision. Push to approximately 10 to 12 times, and it's approximately 90% give or take. 
pushed to approximately 20 times, and it's about approximately 60%. So, there's that. Around 10 times is the near lossless zone. Above that, small text and complex layouts start dropping fidelity at low resolutions. Also, measured precision is dragged down a bit by formatting mismatches versus the ground truth spec. If your pipeline is tolerant to markdown slash table variations, your practical accuracy can look better. In real OCR usage, they benchmark on OmniDoc Bench. With just 100 tokens, small, they beat Got OCR 2.0, which uses 256 tokens. With 400 tokens, large, they're roughly in the state of the art range. Gundam mode, under 800 tokens, outperforms Minor U 2.0, that averages around 7,000 tokens per page. That's a big deal for throughput. Fewer tokens means faster prefill slash generation and lower memory, which is pretty good if you want to batch pages on modest GPUs. Let's walk through tasks and data coverage because it dictates what you can build. OCR 1.0 About 30 million PDF pages across approximately 100 languages. Coarse labels are direct text extractions. Fine labels interleave coordinates with text using layout slash OCR models, PP doc layout, minor U, GOTOCR 2.0. So you can train both reading and layout. They also process approximately 3 million Word docs to image text pairs, which helps formulas and HTML style tables. Natural Scene OCR includes approximately 10 million Chinese and approximately 10 million English images labeled with Paddle OCR. OCR 2.0, approximately 10 million charts rendered with PyCharts slash Matplotlib, where parsing is image to HTML table leaner than dictionary formats. Approximately 5 million chemical formulas rendered from smiles via RD kit and approximately 1 million plane geometry samples with a line segment encoding, slow perception, and translation invariant augmentation, plus approximately 20% general vision data, captions, detection grounding, to keep broad perception, and approximately 10% text, only pre-training to keep the decoder's language ability. It's not a chatbot. You'll use explicit prompts like free OCR, convert the document to markdown, or parse the figure to steer behavior. Now, let me show you how I'd pick modes by doc type. Slides often do fine at 64 tokens, tiny. Books and standard reports look good at 100, small. Multi-column technical PDFs, go base or large for better fidelity. Newspapers or dense financial reports, go Gundam because text tokens per page can be in the four to 5,000 range. If you try tiny small there, you'll get blur and misses. If you remember the pain of tile-first encoders fragmenting pages into thousands of tokens, this approach, if you remember the pain of tile-first encoders fragmenting pages into thousands of tokens, this approach keeps native resolutions higher and tiles fewer. So context stays coherent, which is quite awesome. Training and deployment details for those of you who want to run this. They first train Deep Encoder using a next token prediction setup with a compact LM backbone over OCR and general data. Then they train the full stack using pipeline parallelism split into four parts. PP0 frozen SAM plus 16 times compressor as the vision tokenizer, PP1 trainable clip as the embedding, PP2 to PP3, the three BMOE decoder, six layers each. They used 20 nodes with eight times A100 to 40 gigabytes per node, DP equals 40, global batch 640, reaching approximately 70 billion tokens per day on multimodal and approximately 90 billion per day on text only. For production data generation, 
They quote 200,000 plus pages per day, per A100-40G, and 33 million pages per day across 20 nodes. If you're doing RAG indexing or building pre-training corpora, that's a very usable throughput profile. Locally, you can use the lighter modes on 8 GB VRAM, which is kind of cool for edge or personal setups. Let's talk strengths and weaknesses quickly. Strengths. Token efficiency is the headline. Tiny small cover a lot of common docs, and Gundam picks up the heavy cases without 7,000 tokens per page. The window to global design with a 16 by compressor is pragmatic. It keeps activations low where it matters. Multi-resolution modes let you dial up fidelity per page type. Deep parsing is unified. One model can parse charts to HTML tables, chemistry figures to smiles, geometry to structured segments. Weaknesses. Push compression beyond approximately 10 times and accuracy drops. Small fonts and intricate layouts blur at 512 by 640. Formatting sensitivity means you'll want post-processing to normalize markdown slash table schemas. It's not an agent YVLM. You'll need prompt engineering. And although it runs on 8 gigabytes in lighter modes, if you want Gundam throughput at scale, multi-GPU is still the way. This hits a nice balance. If you want to use it, then there are some hugging face spaces where you can try it out for free, and there's also VLLM implementation to use it with an OpenAI-compatible API. So, that's great. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments as well. Please subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts too. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.